Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reviewing and discussing To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han and the sequel, P.S. I Still Love You. The first portion of this video will be completely spoiler free and my thoughts about just the first book in the duology. And then the second portion of the video, I'll go into a bit more detail and my thoughts on this one. So first off, this book was the cutest thing I think I've ever read outside of Stephanie Perkins. It was so innocent, naive, but in a good way so enjoyable. I did not want this book to end. It took a direction which I did not see coming because I didn't read the synopsis beforehand. And then when the end did come, I was very thankful that there was another book that I could continue reading about these characters. The characters are funny. The dialogue is funny. It had me laughing out loud. Giddy feeling. It made me feel so happy inside. This is the first book that I've read by Jenny Han. This book is about this girl. Her name is Lara Jean. She is a junior in high school. Every boy that she's loved, she decides to write them a letter explaining why she loved them and she saves all of the letters in a hat box and one day at school and one of the boys that she wrote a letter to comes up to her and starts asking her questions about the content of the letter and she's like what letter she rushes home to find all of the letters in the hat box missing that is really all i can say without spoiling any more of the book so for all of you non-spoilery people you should leave let's just get into it and talk about my favorite part I don't have too much to say about it. A cute contemporary romance, there's not too much to say. I really grew to like Peter. I was very skeptical, but I really grew to like him. After Laura Jane and Peter get back from the ski trip, all those rumors going around about them having sex, and Peter really sincerely didn't spread the rumors. I felt so bad for him. Laura Jane was being very dramatic. There was no evidence that could prove that he was the one that did it. She was being really hard on him. She was waiting for that out. She just felt bad for him because I really felt he was being sincere. Yes, people were spreading a rumor about her. Yes, people thought that her and Peter did have sex in the hot tub. But Lara Jean just cares so much about what other people think. She knows it's not true. Peter knows it's not true. Those are really the only people that matter. I was getting to the point where I was just like, get over it, Lara Jean. There was a rumor. Not true. You know it's not true. She's only 16. So obviously, she cares what people think about her. A lot of things that happened in this book stem from Lara Jean caring a little bit too much about what other people think about her. I was frustrated with her reaction in the way that she approached the situation, but then I remember she's only 16. That's such a normal 16 year old's reaction. I really loved the scene. She runs up in the hallway to Peter and she jumps on him and she kisses him. He was all like, what the heck? And we're in the hallways like, what the heck? And she's just going with it. It was just so spontaneous and I give her props for that. You go, Lara Jean. Really, really enjoyed Kitty and Lara Jean's relationship. I loved Kitty. She's just so sarcastic, quick witted for a nine year old for all the reasons why I wish I had a sister. I really do. These three girls made me want a sister. I loved the whole Harry Potter thing and when she dressed up for Cho Chang for Halloween she doesn't like to be any character that's not Asian because then she just gets judged for being a character who's not Asian. I love that she included Harry Potter. That warmed my soul. And I just love that Lara Jean girly, so like vintage and a little quirky but yet she's sarcastic and she was a really good balance of both of those. And this book could have ended with the letter. I'm so glad it's not. It could have been a standalone. It would have been a really sad standalone. It hurts me inside. I love the cupcake scene between Lara Jean and Peter. The flower scene when they get into the food fight. Lara Jean's baking. She's just like a young little Betty Crocker. Sound delicious and I'm very jealous that they're in a book and I don't actually get to eat them. Right from the beginning I thought that Kitty was gonna be the one that had sent the letters. Who else would it have been? It happened right around the time that her and Kitty had gotten into a fight. She's a younger sibling. Of course she's gonna want to get back at you. Of course she's like snoops through your room and knows your innermost secret. That's the job of a younger sibling. I would have suspected her immediately. Lara Jean doesn't. I was very shocked by that. Duh! It's your kid sister. And I love Kitty and Peter's relationship. Even when Peter and Lara Jean were button heads and not getting along so well, Peter and uh, Kitty still had this fantastic relationship and treated her so well and he was just so kind to her. Kitty and Lara Jean dance for Peter. That was hysterical. It was great. So I think that's really all I have to say about this book and have too many thoughts. For those of you who haven't read it, I would definitely suggest you pick it up and give it a peruse. For those of you who haven't read P.S. I Still Love You, 
it is your turn to leave. We are going to now be talking about this one a little bit. This book picks up right where 12th Boys I Love Before left off. A seamless continuation. I love that we get to see the actual relationship and how they function together as a couple. Most contemporary books end with the main characters getting together and you never really see how they work together. So this was like a dream come true. That extra last chapter that you want in every single contemporary book. Jenny Han didn't do that. No, no, no. She gives a whole nother book. And so it starts with Lara Jean going over to Peter's house to give him the letter. And I was so nervous for her. What if things didn't go well? She was writing another letter that had all of her heart and soul poured into it. What if it went badly? She goes over to his house. Peter was just like so indifferent to her being there. <sighs> I felt bad for both of them in that scene because it was just so uncomfortable. She never gives him the letter, sees it in her pocket, and he takes it from her. If she didn't give him that letter, we would have been right back to the same place we were in the book one. We have to watch the characters come together again. Very glad that Jenny Han did not do that. He reads the letter, he confesses his feelings to her, and they get back together immediately at the beginning of the book. Really appreciated that. And then we have the dreaded hot tub video scandal. First of all, Laura Jean is freaking out because there's a rumor being spread that her and Peter had sex in a hot tub. Now there's a video that people can watch over and over again. He's sitting there watching this video and Kitty's, you know, hanging out in the room with them and she's like, what are they doing? Are they having sex? And Laura Jean's like, well, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. Her nightgown's in the way. Wait a minute. What the? She realized it was her inner dialogue of mental breakdown was fantastic. The way that she wrote her reaction to that video was priceless. I loved that we had Margot home from school to help her work through her feelings about that because Laura Jean was basically out of commission. She could not function. She was just like and Margot was taking charge of the situation and telling Laura Jean what she needed to do. I was a little annoyed that in this book we didn't get the resolution between Jen and Laura Jean. It was this whole big story arc. From the beginning of the book, they were friends. They were childhood best friends and something happened and they are no longer friends anymore. What happened was Peter kissed Laura Jean and Genevieve was there to witness it blamed the whole situation on Lara Jean and that Lara Jean made a move on this boy that she apparently knew that Jen liked. Peter came on to Lara Jean. It was just so middle school. She apparently never forgave Lara Jean for that and never will and told her she was dead to her. Jen is just a conniving little she never had a redeeming moment. I thought the scene in the library with the video on loop to The Little Mermaid was hysterical. Lara Jean's just standing there busting on these freshmen. Yeah, you, you know, you should just keep watching that. You know, yeah, press play. See what that is. You just, you know, just keep it going. Yeah, I dare you. Press play. Mm -hmm. That video actually infuriated Peter more than the initial video. Was he embarrassed that it was dubbed to Little Mermaid? I loved Kitty's birthday. She put so much effort into her sister's birthday to make sure that the morning was so special for her. She has Peter come over and gives Kitty a ride to school in his fancy Audi. Usually he takes Kitty to school in the minivan. That's just more safe and appropriate for a young child. John Ambrose McLaren. He is the last boy that gets her letter. He actually writes her back. Adorable. Swooning. I really liked John Ambrose McLaren. He was a better person than Peter. As much as I'm rooting for Peter to be a better person. But then we had this other guy who actually liked Lara Jean before he even got the letter. I was rooting for him too. So it's hard to say who I would even ship. She starts writing back to him and I'm like, oh, Laura Jean, we're entering some dangerous territory. You're gonna lead on this poor innocent soul. Who didn't love that 40s party at the retirement home when he pulls up in that Mustang in his uniform and she's in her 40s get up. That was like the best part of this whole book. Stormy taught John how to dance. He danced with her and it was a complete disaster, but it was still amazingly fun. Unfortunately, Genevieve had to show up and ruin all of it. He pulls up in the car. Genevieve and Peter are like, who? is that? She starts out of the retirement home and runs in the car and they take off speeding and kissed her and it was so cute. I was secretly rooting for John and he realized and he says to her, this just isn't our time. We're just not meant to be right now. I was like, no. 
16-year-old boys aren't that cute. Swoon-worthy. Yes. I felt so bad for Lara Jean when she had to return Peter's necklace. Peter asked for it back. What are you doing? You don't just like ask for it back and not in the middle of school day at, after chemistry class. It was such a symbol of the relationship being over for her. And you right away, as soon as Stormy starts talking about this grandson, I was like, that is John. That's gonna be the last boy. When they start writing the letters and she brings it up to Peter, Peter doesn't have any really reaction to it. Laura Jean gets mad that Peter's not jealous. Laura Jean, he's playing it cool. Doesn't want to seem like a crazy jealous boyfriend. She can't pick up on when people are hiding their emotions. Like the scene in the treehouse with Genevieve when she pulls out the friendship bracelet and Genevieve has no reaction to it. And she's like, well, I guess she doesn't feel anything about this anymore either. Why would she react to that in front of all these other people when she so publicly hates Laura Jean. Of course she's going to deny it. The Laura Jean. Okay, back to John McLaren. So she asks for the letter back. They had been writing for like four or five letter letters at this point. We read the letter she sent to John McLaren. I was embarrassed for her. I don't embarrass easily and I felt bad for her reading that letter. Dear John Ambrose McLaren, I know the exact day it all started. Fall. 8th grade. We got caught in the rain when we had to put all the softball bats away after gym. There was the moment. It was right then. That's when I knew. All the way down to my soaking wet kids. I love you, John Ambrose McLaren. I really love you. Mortifying. And she continues. I was cringing for her. I would never have written those words down on paper with the potential that somebody could take it and read it. There was a small part of me that did think that maybe Peter was cheating on Laura Jean with Genevieve, that maybe something fishy was going on with them. I didn't want to believe it. Peter does seem so very sincere when he tells her that it's nothing. That I was also thinking that maybe Genevieve was making up this tough time because nobody knew what was going on. You know, Chris, her cousin, doesn't know what's going on. And I just wish that Peter would have told Laura Jean. Couldn't imagine how hard it would be to see your new boyfriend with his ex-girlfriend and you don't know anything about it. I loved the time capsule party. That was great in all of the best ways. Recipe for the biggest disaster. Peter and Genevieve. Peter and Lara Jean. And Lara Jean and Genevieve and Lara Jean and John loved the way that played out. They played assassin and it made me want to play this game assassin. They had so much fun. The 40s dance party, the assassin scenes, which Lara Jean took so very seriously. I loved the scene with the snowball fight purely because Jenny Han referenced Frozen. John, say to Lara Jean, do you want to build a snowman? And I nearly wept with happiness. So one more thing about John Ambrose McLaren. I was secretly rooting for him. I'm okay that she ended up with Peter. I'm secretly rooting for John in the end. I believe it is just a duology, but I think Jenny Han could get one more book out of this. I really do. Maybe a few years down the line, when you know things with Peter don't work out, don't pan out, she can do a John. That's a good idea. She should write that. She should do that. That's really all I have to say about these books. Like I said, they're just both very cute, light, funny, contemporary stories, and I enjoyed both of them immensely. It makes me want to give some other books by Jenny Han a chance as well, because I very much enjoyed her storytelling in her writing. And so tell me down below, who did you ship? Did you ship John or did you ship Peter? That's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye! I got- oh, what was that? It was like... I don't know. Completely spoil-free. Oil free. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. How many more times can I say I didn't? The book just made me want to. Oh.